I wanted to build a relatively low power, well, low-ish power, about 5 watts of output power, um, vacuum tube amplifier, single-ended, um, for quite a while. And <clears throat> in this video we'll just go over um, what uh, uh, vacuum tubes I ended up choosing and a couple other design considerations. <clears throat> So the classic vacuum tube for a single-ended amplifier would be the EL84. Um, or if you want to work with lower voltage and a different heater, this is um, the PL84, which is actually um, not the same tube internally. It's a little bit different. It's made for lower um, anode voltage. But this would be the, something like this would be the classic tube. And then you'd maybe pair it with... Um, a pair of uh, ECC 82s or 83s and um, that would give you your, your classic single ended amplifier but um, this is actually quite quite large you've got four tubes there I mean you could you could go to one of these um, and have only one amplification stage um, because these don't need all that much drive voltage really um, but still um, this is this is not as compact as I wanted to have it. Um, so what we could do is uh, we could instead use um, this smaller uh, uh, PL95, which is a miniature output uh, tube, initially um, designed for using car stereos. And yeah, this is a lot smaller. I mean, about half the volume, realistically. And then we pair it with an EC... 92 a PC 92 um, and that would give us a relatively small amplifier um, but smaller still we could for stereo we could substitute two of these um, by one of one of these double triodes and this is actually a concept I toyed with um, and this, it's not fully populated. It's missing the power supply section up here. Um, this would just have a couple of filter caps. But if I just um, plug this in. Not all that gently. Um, this is the wrong tube. I want to hit... Uh, this one. So you can see this is a really compact amplifier. This is all you'd need um, aside from the output transformer and um, the uh, power transformer. This is relatively small. Um, but then I tested this and um, uh, besides me messing up the layout a bit and having to use a, a couple of bodge wires. And also these capacitors are uh, too small. But um, I wasn't all that happy with the performance. This is... Um, in terms of output power, um, this is maybe just below what I wanted. I think um, I measured it, I got about 3 watts of output power. Which is okay for normal listening, um, especially because this is a very small room I want to use that in, um, and it's not um, it's just for casual listening, um, but still, I wasn't quite happy with the output power. The layout had some other issues, and um, so I abandoned this um, then I thought. Um, maybe I'll I'll uh, do the EL84. Um, might be a bit larger, but then uh, at least I'll have some power. And pair it with an EF86, which is classic audio amplifier pentoed. Uh, have plenty of drive, um, but this is also quite large. Um, and then I remembered that a lot of early TVs actually use these um, this is actually a rather worn example um, these 
PCL 82s. Um, I've got a couple of these that are a little nicer. Um, but this is just the one that I've been trying my circuits with. Um, uh, with another one that's um, slightly less worn. I usually use um, fairly worn out tubes to um, test um, stuff because you want a worn out but uh, still no shorts or, or anything damaged uh, tube to um, first of all if you destroy it then yeah you lost a tube that you can't really use anyway or that you wouldn't want to use anyway and um, also it tests your circuit for robustness because you want your circuits uh, to still work fine if your tube goes down to like 70 percent emissions um, a, a vacuum tube circuit that's really dependent on an extremely strong tube is not a good circuit because they are going to degrade over time anyway. Um, so I remember that a, a lot of uh, early monochrome television receivers used um, one of these for mono audio. And this is a combination um, vacuum tube. It has one fairly large, and I'll just focus in here, fairly large triode here and then also a fairly large pentode here um, and the um, the output transformer you'd use for this um, is normally it's around 4.8k I think um, of impedance but you could just use um, one for the that's also um, usable for the EL or um, PL, PL is also a little lower, um, but for the EL84, which is 5.2, 5.6, um, that won't be all that ideal, but it will still work and it'll still sound fairly good. Um, you get a little lower output power, though. So, um, I think I want to um, build an amplifier that uses the PCL82, and in form factor, I want... Um, two boards of about this size, one that has basically all the, um, the, the two channels, um, the audio amplifier, uh, excluding the power supply, which is on here, but this is a fairly crowded board, and I had to um, make these capacitors a little uh, smaller than I would have wanted, and that's why uh, it's probably one of the reasons why this doesn't sound as good as it could, but... Um, and again, even if I substituted these, um, the output power is still fairly low. So I want two boards of of this size, and um, one will have the amplifier and one will have the power supply. And we'll design the power supply in the next video. Um, usually when building a vacuum tube amplifier, you would work um, your way back. So from the speaker to the um, uh, output transformer to the um, power amplifier to the preamplifier to the input to the power supply. Um, but since I have my design parameters fairly um, fairly fixed now, because with this tube, I know what output transformer I'm going to use. I know what uh, sort of voltage I want to use. And we'll talk about that in the next video. Um, so I think I can easily start by building the power supply. I also know um, the heater requirements. Um, which is 16 volts at 300 milliamps for these. But since we're having two in um, series, we'll... Have 32 volts at 300 milliamps. We could also do 16 at 600, but um, I think, and we'll talk about that too in the next video. I want to um, be a little clever with the heater there, um, so that I don't need an additional transformer, and for that it's better to have lower currents. So yeah, I think this is what we're going to do next time. Build the um, power supply section. And um, then in the third part, we're going to build the actual amplifier. And in the fourth part, we're going to put it in a case. And um, then we'll have a nice little series. And a new amplifier for me to listen to music. So um, I'll see you on the next one.